Like I say, this DC2 Integra or any other Honda, whether it's an EK, EG, EF, they all pretty much have the same steps. It's just different ways to do go about doing it, and depending on what kit you have. So uh, we're going to get started right now, and uh, step by step, hopefully everything works out. So let's get it going. All right, this is my NA setup. First thing most people do is probably take off the front bumper. But you know what? I'm not going to do that first. First thing I'm going to do is try to mock up the exhaust manifold. As you can see right now, they kind of look like a turbo exhaust manifold. But it's actually a uh, PLM header. I think it's private label manufacturer. I believe that's what it stands for. But uh, we're going to remove that and uh, get the, the turbo exhaust manifold. Mock it up. Only one thing I rarely see a turbo setup that's able to keep a full radiator. As you can see, I have a full radiator in here. Radiator in here. Most cars end up going with the half radiator. Um, the exhaust manifold I have is not a ram horn. It's just a regular cast iron um, manifold. So hopefully it'll fit in here and not hit the radiator so I can keep my full radiator because I actually like my full radiator but if it don't fit go have to get rid of it so the first thing you want to do hopefully you can see those I'm inside the garage it's early morning it's cold out like I say I just got over a cold so I'm not really letting up the door to let any light in but you see these bolts you want to remove those one here one down there there it is it's one up there so it just go up down up down so you want to take those out all the way across and then there's two under the bottom I'm going to show you the two under the bottom right now all right so the two under the bottom are these two bolts right here you have one here and one over there so take the ones off the top I believe it's about eight of them and then the two at the bottom, and your exhaust manifold should come down. Depending on your setup and what car you're doing your turbo installation on. So let's get those off. And once they're removed, we'll continue on. Alright, so as you can see, we have the exhaust manifold off. And after doing a little pre-mock-up, I realized that I will not be able to keep my full radiator the turbo turbo actually hits the radiator um you can clock the turbo to uh get it to line up to the um uh, what you call that the intercooler piping so i'm going to fit it on the car and then clock the turbo and once i get that done i'll show you what i mean by clock the turbo clock the turbo just means you can uh spin the turbo to get it to line up to the specific angles that you needed to hopefully after doing that maybe it give me a little room but still I don't think it would be enough room to keep this radiator so if you like me and have a full radiator and you come to the conclusion that you will not be able to use this radiator what you will have to do is under the bottom let me show you real quick most of the time on the passenger side dark up here uh, I don't know if you see where the water is dripping but there should be a drain plug usually it has a uh, butterfly uh, end to it that you can twist with your hand mine didn't it actually had a little rubber piece that you have to put a wrench around to unloosen but <coughs> you unloosen the drain and the fluid will come out excuse me so once you unloosen and drain the water then you have to I loosen the lower radiator hose while you're under here. I go back to the top. Take off the upper radiator hose. And before you loosen the radiator hoses and drain the coolant, make sure you take off the radiator cap to reduce the, uh, release the pressure. After you do those steps, you just say one 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter screw here. And a 10 millimeter screw here. These tabs that come off. 
then the radiator should be able to lift up. So I'm going to do that and put the uh, turbo exhaust manifold on and see you on that next. So we'll continue on. All right, so this is one of the issues I've ran into. That's the beauty of trying to modify cars. Things won't always go your way. So check this out here. Uh, the previous owner, the gentleman I bought the car from, they used actual uh, bolts to hold the exhaust manifold on. Usually there's a stud. There's a stud that stay in the head and you just twist on the, the nut onto the stud. As you can see, that works. My exhaust manifold only had one stud in it, which was way over here in the corner at the bottom. So all the other ones had bolts in them. So with this turbo exhaust manifold, as you can see, the hole is so close to the actual ports that the head of these bolts are too big to get in there. But the ones, um, I noticed the one that had the stud in it, it worked perfectly. All I had to do was spin on the nut. I'm a big fan of keeping screws and studs and nuts or whatever from previous projects I've done. So I was able to come up with five of the uh, original studs from previous engines that I've had uh, in my possession. But I only came up with five and I need, what, eight or nine. So looks like I'm going to be doing the pick apart run. But I have enough to mock up the exhaust manifold and the turbo. You know, right now it's just a mocking up process to see how everything fits. So I have enough to get the exhaust manifold on there so I can mock up the um, the uh, downpipe and see how the uh, intercooler um, lines are going to, intercooler piping is going to run. So I'm going to have to go to pick apart and get some more studs with the nuts so I can actually tighten down the exhaust manifold the way it's supposed to be. But um, for you who have, I don't think a lot of you are going to come across this problem because it's rare that you find people that just put actual bolts to hold on the exhaust manifold. Usually they just stick to the, the studs, and you should stick to the studs. Reason being, this head is aluminum, and if you've worked on cars long enough, you know aluminum strip. And if you're the type to ex exchange or swap parts often, you don't want to keep unloosening and tightening bolts into an aluminum part. After a while, it'll strip. It'll strip easily. Aluminum strips real easily. So they put studs in it so you don't have to keep pulling the stud in and out every time you want to change the exhaust manifold. You could just take the nut off and the stud stays in the head. So that process, um, it, it lowers the percentage of you actually stripping the threads inside of the head, which is good. But uh, in my case, somebody removed all the studs but one and decided to put bolts in there. So, I mean, it was fine as long as you were going to keep that same exhaust manifold on there. But when it comes to swapping out parts, then you start running into problems like how I am. But um, as you can see, I got the uh, exhaust manifold on there with the turbo. Nothing bolted up permanently. It's just on there so I can mock everything up and see how things are going to fit and find out what trouble I'm going to run into or what changes I may have to make. But um, on to the next step. <clears throat> the next step I'm going to do is drop the oil pan. I don't know if you're aware of this turbo has a in oil feed in. The oil actually cools the turbo. So you have the inlet at the top. Then you have the, uh, the drain at the bottom. Where the drain has to go into the uh, oil pan. Either you tap your oil pan so the drain can go back into the oil pan, or you buy a Moroso um, oil pan that already has one in there. That's what I did. Save me some time. So I'm gonna drain the oil, drop the oil pan, and put on the other uh, Moroso oil pan, and then um, I'll show you how that go. Um, let me show you real quick how to uh, take off the oil pan from the bottom. Alright, so to remove the oil pan is real simple. You have bolts under the bottom. You can see these little 10 millimeter bolts. They go all the way around the oil pan. In order to remove it, you have to drop the exhaust manifold. <coughs> Excuse me. 
which is we already done. So just follow the boats around the oil pan. It's best to drain the oil before you start taking off these boats or it will leak horribly. So drain the oil and then just start unloosening these boats around the oil pan and the oil pan will come down. Um, depending on which gasket that's already on your pan, you may be able to reuse it. Um, I'm going to try to reuse mine, just use some silicone with it and it should hold up fine. This is an aftermarket oil pan gasket, it's blue. The original one isn't blue so I should be alright. That looks like one you could possibly reuse so I'm going to try to reuse it. If it doesn't work out, then it looks like I have more work ahead of me. But um, that's how you drop the oil pan. Just follow these bolts all the way around, I loosen them, drop the pan. And then put your new pan on or after you tap the oil drain into your oil pan, put it back on. But like I say, I have another one I'm going to put on, so I don't have to worry about that. And the oil drain is actually under the turbo. It's right here. There's a fitting that goes right there. It should come with the kit, so check it out. Make sure it's with the kit or see what you have to do to get that. Mount it up correctly, and we shall continue. All right, so as you can see, I already removed my original oil pan and put the Moroso oil pan on. Also, you can see that it already has the uh, the oil return tap for if you're running a turbo. So that's the uh, tap that I was talking. Has to return the oil back into the oil pan. I didn't have to tap my uh, original oil pan. It's more money, but it saves some time. This one already has it, so I just screw a, take that uh, plug out, screw a fitting in there, and call it a day. Um, also, I mentioned that my head didn't have the studs. And this turbo manifold wouldn't work with the bolts that was actually holding on my uh, my how can I say my uh, previous exhaust manifold. I already went to pick apart and um, got the uh, studs for the head, so I'm about to put those in. As you can see, this is just mocked up. I just got one screw here, one in the lower corner over there. So um. <laughs> After this, we're going to be removing the front bumper, and just to get it out the way, because you have to remove it in order to run the um, the intercooler piping. So, to remove the front bumper, I've never done it, but I watch videos on uh, YouTube, so you can go to YouTube and uh, look at some videos that talk about removing the front bumper on a 94 to, what is it, 01? Integra, but I believe you take this screw here out, this one right here, and across the front, there's this screw, this one here, that one there, that one there, that one there, that one there, here, and here, just like the other side. You want to take off this screw, and I believe that one. I'm going to take them both out just in case. Um, <clears throat> also, there's a screw somewhere in the fender. Uh, it's hard to see with my phone, but also in the fender in this area, there's a screw you need to take out. Uh, yeah. There's a Phillips screw right where my finger is. I don't know if you can see that, but right where my finger is in front of the wheel, there's a Phillips screw on both sides. And if you look under the bottom, there's a screw here, which is mine is almost shaved flat from rubbing against the ground, I guess. And there's another one over here. And the bumper should come off. So that was just a a quick pointer of how to take it off. But 
if you want a more thorough video of how to take off the front bumper, you can look it up on YouTube. Alright, so now you see the front bumper is off. Now when you take off the front bumper, just be aware there's clips that go in here. All mine broke. I don't know if maybe some of them weren't in there to begin with. Because I haven't uh, found them. I only seen one and it was broke. So you might want to be careful because without those clips, the bumper might have a gap between the fender and the bumper. And you don't want that. So I'm about to go to the dealer and see if I can find some. I looked them up on eBay, but uh, <clears throat> I couldn't find any. So the bumper is off, and uh, the next step is to try to mock up the intercooler. As you can see, mine's not on right now. I already mocked it up and know where it go. But what you want to do, you want to sit the intercooler. You want to prop it on something. And when you prop it on something, it'll hold it for you. The intercooler is going to bolt. Good. Right up under this bumper support. Yeah, I know, right? So once you mock it up, it could go under this bumper support. If you get that measuring and all that kind of stuff, you know where to drill the holes to bolt it in. Once I get mine in, I'll show you how I done it. Um, like I say, prop it up on something and then start putting in your uh, intercooler piping so you know where you need it to be so the piping can reach it because if you put it too far to the left or too far to the right the piping that go on the side won't be able to reach it so you want to prop it up make sure the intercooler piping reach it you can start by getting the one from the intake run it down then this piping right here grows on the passenger side put it on the, the intake piping and then this end goes into the intercooler and same thing over here there's one that got the u-bin it also goes into the intercooler so just make sure wherever you prop up the uh, intercooler it's able to reach the intercooler piping on uh, each side so once you do that we move on to the next step I'm going to start mine right now, and once I'm finished, we'll move on. As you can see, I already have my turbo mocked up, the oil feed line going into it. Now, when you get the turbo, it might not be lined up correctly to install it, so you might have to clock the turbo. Uh, usually, to clock the turbo, this is the um, exhaust side. you see a round plate. And it has about six of these, uh, I think they 13 millimeter or uh, half inch um, bolts. You'll loosen all six of those. And this you'll be able to spin. Because when I had mine, this oil feed uh, plate right here was actually facing down. And then the drain was facing up. So I got confused and thought that the... Uh, the plate that I needed to put on the turbo was too small because it was I was trying to put it on the, the drain side instead of the feed side so make sure that's in the proper position before you uh, go to lock everything up so you gotta loosen the six bolts from the exhaust if you want to spin the exhaust and also on the turbo this plate right here it also has six uh, 13 millimeter or half Bolts, you know, loosen those, and you can spin the turbo. There's other videos on YouTube that shows how to clock turbo, clock a turbo. So uh, check them out if you need any further assistance on there. So that's the oil you feed. Now I'm gonna show you how I did my drain. What I did, uh, as I mentioned in the other session, when I installed the oil pan, it already had a oil feed. Uh, tap made into it so all I had to do my kit came with this braided line I think they call them AN fittings so you just put the come on camera focus there we go you just put this plate at the bottom of the turbo make sure you put your gasket in that's the gasket right there and you use 
use uh, Teflon. I use Teflon on everything I have to thread in. And with the AN fitting, you're supposed to use AN fittings on both ends. But what I did, I just went to uh, Ace Hardware and purchased a, uh, I, guess, I don't know if you can see that, but a bronze fitting. It threads into the oil pan, but the other end is just a, a bar slip on. So I just took this braided hose, slipped it over it, and put a hose clamp on it. To me, that was a lot easier than uh, dealing with these AN fittings. To get them situated, like you have to put this fitting on the end of this braided uh, line. And the way it's done is kind of, I don't know, I'm not used to that kind of technology. I'm used to the old school, slip it over, hose clamp it, call it a day. So. I did it for this end and I uh, ran it into the turbo, but I decided just to do the old school way at the bottom. So this is the drain, how you will run your drain line. Comes down and make sure there's no, no kinks in the drain line. Um, try to get it as straight as possible. I couldn't get mine real straight because the uh, intercooler piping goes to the mouth of the turbo right here. It's actually like right above this. Neighbors cutting the grass, so I gotta speak up. So I have to put this little uh, loop in the bottom so it'll clear the uh, intercooler piping. But just make sure there's no major bends so when the oil come out, it then has to travel upwards to go into the pan. You don't want that. You wanna keep it all downhill, downflow as possible. Alright, now we're going to look into the oil feed. This could be a little tricky depending on which kit you purchase. Some kits come with a, uh, it's called a sandwich plate. It goes between the oil filter, and <coughs> excuse me, still getting over gold. It goes in between the oil filter and the block. I didn't purchase that kit, I got the one that I was familiar with and it used a fitting. And if you see my finger, that's the fitting right here, this bronze spot right here. And where it goes is to the left of the oil filter, you will see your oil pressure sensor. You twist that out, and then this fitting will twist in. And if you're running um, an aftermarket oil pressure sensor, this fitting right here has one, two, three, has four corners. One corner is used to thread back into the block. This one right here where my finger is, is plugged because I'm not using it. That one right there is actually the oil feed line that's going to the turbo. You can see it here and it's running all the way up here through the split of the, uh, uh, the, the intake runners. And then the last one is here which is on running the aftermarket oil pressure switch. I mean, I switched with oil pressure gauge, so I threaded it into there. So you either get the one with the fitting and run your lines, your oil pressure lines, or you can get the one with the sandwich plate that goes in between the oil filter. Now let's go up top and see how it's going. <sighs> if you come up here, you will see the oil line is running up. Wrapping right to the top of the turbo, that's the oil feed line. So that's how I did mine. You can also, depending, you might be able to run this line instead of over the valve cover. You might be able to run it through this split right here or down the side, depending on how long your line is. Mine is not long enough to make all these <coughs> trips around the valve cover. So I just went over it, straight into it. So what's up, this is the finishing touches. Got the turbo on there, the waste gate. Uh, I had to put a, this is the radiator from a 92, 94 Civic. Um, all I did, was put this as far to the left as you possibly can. 
Then this tab right here, that's the original tab from the Integra. Uh, it's usually two. It's usually like one right there, and then on the other side, it's like one right there. I just took that tab off, and it was too short. But the piece that bolt here still went. The, this part right here is usually straight. It goes straight. What I did, I just bent it down. And when I bent it down, luckily there was a hole on a radiator, and I just put a 10 millimeter screw through it. And uh, it held, it's tight. And at the bottom, you know, you have the other lip that the radiator fit on. This radiator don't fit in the hole. I just sat it on it like a, you know, like a ledge. It's just sitting there. So when it's sitting there and bolted it down, it's good. It I put this rubber piece here because it was leaning up against the, the body of the car. And it was uh, making vibrations. So I just put a little piece of rubber there to kind of keep the vibration down. Another thing, the oil feed line for the turbo was too short to go all the way around to the turbo. So as you can see, I had to take it across the top of the turbo. So some of you might come across that problem, some of you won't. I actually wasted some water, like soapy water on the exhaust manifold. And when I turn the car on, you know, once the exhaust manifold get hot, whatever grease or oil that's on there, it gets burned in. And it left that stupid white line right there, so whatever. I haven't tried to clean it off, but um, that's right there. Turbo, it's down here. Always try to put a filter in the end. Mine has a three inch inlet, so I just got a three inch air filter and uh, put it on there. Some people run the uh, screen. You can make a screen just to put over it. Um, this is a catch can. Got this off eBay also. I put my cash can to the back of the block. I'll make a video later on, show you how to do that. Instead of running it into the valve cover, it's actually coming from the back of the block. Um, so this is the finishing touches. Hopefully the video helped out, give you some ideas on how to put a turbo on a DC2 Integra. That's from 94 to 01, I believe. Should be the same. So there's the piping, runs down. There's the blow off. Make a video of how to uh, get different sounds out of your blow off valve. If you want the whatever sound your blow off valve make, whether it's a whistle or the actual sound, it's gonna make that with. And I can get it to also make the other um, what they call it. More like you know how uh, what they call it surge turbo surge. So if you want the turbo surge noise, I can also show you how to do that. I'll make another video to show you how to get that turbo surge. Um, but that's it. Hope you like my tutorial of how to turbo a DC2. And if you have any questions, leave comments at the bottom. Like, subscribe. Check your cats later.